Alex, the floor is yours. So, um, uh, Alex, Alex uh, Silva. Uh, I have not been coming here for a long time. Actually, this is, I guess, the fourth time where they are joining in an already talk. <laughs> uh, what happened is that uh, I applied for the Zurich Friends of Hasco, and as Sami said, uh, Oracle, I could pay or talk. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it worked. It worked. <laughs> and uh, and talk. Uh, decided to talk and not about Haskell today, but about Andrews. Um, because actually, I don't know which for a long time. We discovered it last year only. But uh, I was really uh, struck by some of the uh, the expressiveness uh, of the of the type system. Read about it, did a lot of uh, uh, you know small programs, uh, practice, and given this opportunity, uh, so uh, just by asking what I'd like to talk about, then I said like uh, I was uh, reading about Idris, then uh, I'll talk about it. Um, okay, so let's start. <coughs> just uh, a few points uh, before we see any code. <coughs> Idris was born from the question, what if Haskell had full dependent types? So when you read or see uh, Idris code, you're going to see that it's very similar to Haskell code, minor, bar some minor differences. And this is, this is the, the, the start of the design of the, the, the question that started. Uh, but unlike Haskell, it is strict, it's pure, it's functional, but it's strict. It has uh, interfaces, they are not called type classes because there are a few, uh, uh, some uh, small semantic differences between type classes and interfaces. You can have, for instance, um, they, don't, they don't have to be unique. You can have more than one interface uh, for the same type, you can implement them, then you can do the way using uh, uh, some code, some tags. But they have all the, the They really follow what they what happened in the Haskell world and it's good. <laughs> they really steal it. Uh, Monetic IO, so no surprise there. We have Monet, we have IO, IO type as well. Uh, denotation, uh, 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 but it's not restricted to, to the Monet. Anything <coughs> that it has the the operator, how do you pronounce it? On the by operator. Functional overloading, so we can have more than we have functions with the same name, and it just has namespaces, so we can namespace A, B, C, D, and then you fully qualify the, the, the function name when you need it. But most of the time, it just it will uh, infer which function you are talking about. Uh, we have a string type, which is not a list of characters. Level functions, so in Haskell, that, that those would be uh, type families, but <coughs> it is, they are just functions. Uh, and there's a, a big uh, emphasis in development with holes, <coughs> and the, the IDEs can really help there because the types are so expressive, the IDEs can almost guess what you are trying to say, to, to what you are trying to write, and sometimes can feel you uh, write code. I will try to, uh, to run Max here, and I guess I'm uh, okay. And show how you, like, you can write some more functions and we will have to type a lot for some small functions. <coughs> uh, and another, uh, another thing is that when people talk about Idris, they usually talk about uh, Kopp, uh, Agila, Idris in the same breath, but Idris is not very mature at the moment, but the goal, the, the end goal, the end game, is to be a practical language so you can write uh, practical software in it. Uh, one big difference is that uh, you can only write uh, thought of functions in Kotlin or Agila, but in Idris you can also write practical functions if they don't uh, mess up the type inference. Okay, so this is just 
just a overview. Uh, just so we don't get lost uh, with later uh, examples, I wanted to show a few uh, syntax differences between Haskell and Jesus. You can see that uh, it's, uh, the column and the double column are reverse Jesus. So when we want to, to give a type of an expression, we use a single column, more like math. And when you are using cons, you use double column. Like Haskell. Uh, for, for lambdas and for field expressions, we use the double arrow instead of the single arrow. And we don't have the, the list type constructor is the actual word, word list instead of the brackets. But overall, it's very, very similar. Uh, this is a note for myself. <laughs> You see that its code is very colorful in this presentation. Uh, it reads the this repo when it talks to ID has a protocol and it tells the ID how to color the code because it's it's uh, because of technical computations the ID cannot like an ID mode by itself cannot decide what is what in time. And then it reads <coughs> the ID, the ID in the ID stock. Using this, um, this protocol, and it just says this is a data constructor, this is a function, and then the ID colors the code. Is, sorry, is this the, this OSP protocol and the language server protocol, or is this something custom? It's a custom address? protocol. Um, and um, oh, there was this something I forgot. Okay, do you remember what it is? <coughs> oh, yeah, and the latex code for this for the presentation was also put by the So what are the different types? A different type is a type whose definition depends on a payload. So when we have um, higher kind of types in Haskell, like maybe or either, the definition maybe is a type constructor, we give it a type, it gives you back another type. Right? So maybe bool, maybe int, uh, maybe integer. Uh, you can have either bool or string, but bare uh, extensions, we're talking about just normal Haskell. You cannot parameterize a type constructor using a payload. And this is what the, the, the dependent type brings you. So you can have uh, a vector, which is the classical example. They have a, a list, and the size of the list, the length of the list is part of the list type. And this, this simple idea has very big ramifications. Everything that it, this this brings, but it's uh, this idea it, um, is very it's very powerful idea because we know uh, from the the current hard uh, isomorphism that types and theorems are equivalent, and the more expressive the types, the more expressive are the theorems that you can that you can uh, write down your. So as a, a few examples, you can have the compiler check for you, prove for you, that you have, uh, that, that your list is not empty when you are going to call a uh, head. So in Haskell, <coughs> you usually have this um, uh, historical present with those uh, partial functions like head, and people say, don't call head, don't use head, uh, try something else. You cannot have this problem uh, with interest because head is total. <coughs> Can you can uh, check before removing an element from a list that it's there in the list. You can, uh, this is, uh, I saw this one once, but uh, it's a complicated complex, but can be done. You can prove that a sorted list is a permutation of the original list. So if we have not introducing new elements or removing elements. <coughs> you can have a, a you can call your close function only complete files, and you cannot close a file twice. You can even uh, 
uh, having more uh, mundane things like prove that an email is well formed before you press this move to another function later in your web app. So about the closing files and then closing twice, that sounds like linearity, right? Um, so yeah, you but the difference is that uh, the type is not used, it's just a different type, it just changes. Uh, you have a I state like five open and five close, and parameterize your type from using this state. It can switch back and forth several times. With linear types, when you use it, when oh, you use it, it's, it's gone. Yeah. Okay. But how do you make sure then that there's no reference around that references the value with the type where the file is open? You mean? You mentioned the file might have some monad to keep track of some of this stuff. So. I, I wonder if you don't have linear yeah. types in your system, yeah. then you can't really keep track of how many copies of a value yeah. are there. Yeah, I, I will try to show an example later. You, yeah, also. you can have like a, a lot of data type for commands. Each constructor is a command of your DSL, mm -hmm. and you have a state open and close. And even if you don't type of a function, like a function that will open a file, read up some lines, and then close the file. You can put in the fi uh, function signatures that they state when the function starts its file closed and when the function finishes its file closed. So if you by mistake leave the file open in the middle of the function, you're not going to compile because the states are different. Okay. <coughs> so let's move on. Uh, there are two types of different types. Uh, there are pipe types and sigma types. The pipe types, they are the, the functions. Uh, in this example here, we have a function that can return a string or an int, depending on the input. So the type signature have an actual case expression that will run uh, by, the, by the compiler at compile time. And you decide if you want to output a, a, a string or, a, or an int. Uh, I said before that Idris allows you to write partial functions in partial code, but it doesn't allow those in type signatures. So it has a value checker, and if it, if it doesn't pass the check, you cannot use it. Sometimes you, watch, you know that your function or your code is total, but you cannot use it. And there are some uh, backdoors for that. You can use a, some assert, like assert total. Of course, if I run your code, it will crash. <laughs> it's like a safe performer, you will want safe course. But it's there if you really need it. But usually the checker works fine, and it, can, and it, will, tell you, it, it will tell you if your function is not total. You cannot use this function in a type signature. But when you can use, you can see that it's, at first it's really strange, so you don't know uh, without uh, running the function, which type do we got? And the sigma type is um, it's like a tuple, but instead of a comma, uh, we use two, two asterisks, two stars. And the, when you need to introduce a value, so your type can depend on that value, you use a sigma type. So this is how new uh, types are introduced. I will show an example later on if I can get confused. So, another uh, fun trick is to calculate the type of a function uh, on the fly. So, <coughs> you just have this type uh, net for natural numbers. It's, uh, Built-in type you can use Z, S, but you can also use the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3. It will convert for you back and forth. So we want to have uh, an other function which doesn't have a fixed number of arguments. So we want to add a bunch of numbers together. Sorry. Uh, so if you if you are okay with passing the number of arguments to the function, you can use this helper function, which you can say is a type level function, but it's just a regular function, uh, other type. And 
and you give it a number to give you back a type. Uh, if you give it nothing, the type is gonna be just int. But if you give it a, a number bigger than zero, it's gonna give you back a function, uh, the type of a function that takes an int, and the rest of the signature is uh, calculated recursively. So as the number uh, gets smaller, we will eventually finish. And then you have, if I give a five, I'll have int, 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 int. A function of uh, five uh, arguments. So, in other, if I give it uh, the first segment zero, it will run the other type function at compile time. It will see that uh, the, the type is going to be int. I don't know if I'm going <laughs> to. If I give it zero, this whole thing here will be just int. And it's going to be int, int. And then I'm going to just return the accumulator. If I give it something else, I need to return a function because this part here is going to give me a function type. <coughs> then I need to write a function. So I return a lambda, and this lambda will just accumulate uh, the integers on passing. Is there a typo on data not equals c versus other type zero? So it's you can use in, uh, or either c, uh, z, or zero. It doesn't matter. It just knows that this zero is it's not. Okay. <coughs> So that is built in type. Yeah. Uh, is this clear how this example works? Uh, the type type there is uh, similar to Haskell uh, the star kind. You know? So either is there is not the, you don't use the star kind, you just use type. But it's a similar concept. If not as built in, does Idris perform any optimizations on that, or is it still going to be some kind of a you know, chain of yeah. pointers? Yeah, they, uh, <coughs> at compile time, it uses the data uh, type just as it's right, uh, written there, mm -hmm. but at runtime it's erased, it uses integers. So they don't exist at runtime, just at compile time. But if you have a very big type with a lot, with a very big net, your completion time can get uh, really long because this erasure is done only for one time. You say that NAT gets converted to integers because you use a different type actually for the value argument there. Yeah, uh, so there is this two, two phases uh, the compilation, the runtime, and the compiler uses <coughs> NAT as this inductive data type. Uh, so it's is what you see is what you get. But for runtime it has this let's say this trick that uh, what was NAT becomes a uh, becomes a NIT. Well, that's that's one is arbitrarily can be long, arbitrarily large, the other cannot. How does that work? Ah probably can an integer sorry. I mean, an integer. Uh, oh, oh arbitrary. Okay, arbitrary. Yeah. Oh, so it's oh, okay, okay. So int here is uh, in, in, in address is um, fixed precision, or is it arbitrary precision, or is yeah. it some some similar yeah. Haskell? Yeah, int is the uh, fixed data type. Uh -huh. and the integer is the okay. The arbitrary number. It's the same as in Haskell. Okay. Yeah. okay. okay uh, the same technique can be used for writing a safe printf function, for instance. If you parse the format string, you know which arguments you need for, for the remaining arguments, and you use a helper function to give you back the type, and then your printf will always be safe. Or another example is if you have a SQL query to access a database, you can give this query to a helper function and to give you back the type that you want to retrieve from database. So if you get the, you, you, you don't get the wrong type, I just checked it statically. 
just delete it. So is it for the format string, if I read the format string from a file, would you just refuse to compile because you could not check it statically? Like if I read the actual string, right? Yeah, it needs to be in compiler time. So it can give up and say, I, I cannot solve this. Would it be that you don't have I.O. available at the time? Yeah. That's true. It's not only the files to, to the database, right? You need the schema at compile time in order to just. No, uh, but you can <coughs> uh, keep it on at runtime. Idris, it has a, a, a erasure anal uh, analysis, so it, what it will need, it removes from the, run the compiled code at runtime. But if you are calling a uh, function like other type at runtime, it's going to keep the function, it's not going to erase it. So, um, oh, I don't think I quite get it. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, if I have a SQL query that is read from database, right, and you, I want to know that this is type correct, how does that exactly work if you don't have the schema, you don't know what those fields in the database are, what types? No, but you need to have the you need to each have a, a data type that's going to mirror what's in the string. So you translate the string to this data type. Yeah. Uh, like a, uh, the data type has going to have constructors for your different database types. It's not that dynamic. You need to have this data type. And then when you translate the string to a data type, this data type will, will tell. Uh, it, it happens a lot during uh, case analysis, you know, in the case of uh, the elimination. When you do elimination in interest, <coughs> like there, this is where Idris will give to each branch a different type, and the type chart will go from there. So let's say that you are running, uh, reading from a file, um, the value of boo, right? You don't know it's going to be the available of boo yet. You're going to receive from the network. That's fine because in each branch of the uh, this, this is a case uh, just using Papa and matching that this is a case. In each branch, it has different type. The type checker can go from there to whatever to have uh, twenty functions later in your in your program doesn't matter because from this branch on in your program the type of the, of the expression is going to be string. And from this other branch on in your program, the type is going to be an integer. So the type checker can do this check at compile time, even if you are going to receive the, the value from the natural. Right, but then, then you need to essentially write in the program, you need to enumerate all the possible yeah. things that can yeah. come from <coughs> yeah. Don't Okay, so if I have select foo, I essentially need to enumerate all the cases, what whatever foo can be. Yeah, yeah, you cannot. The, the function it. has to be total, and the compiler does a, co a totality check. So it can't be, you know, the moment it can't prove that the function is total, compilation stops. It won't compile a program. Mm. I, I can think you just look at an example? Or maybe a concrete example about like getting the type from an SQL query or whatever is right. We say like select age from users where username equals somebody, right? Then in this case, on the query itself, you know this is gonna be int, right? But there is no guarantee whatsoever from anywhere that the database will actually, or at least visible to our programming language that that age will actually be int at that point. If we did full enumeration of the cases, what we would have would essentially be the equivalent of a sum type of all uh, data types that SQL can, re can be returned. And right. I think your question right. now is, if I write select age from users where name is equal to something, how do I know that this SQL query returns int if I don't even know what the type of age in my SQL, in my SQL database is? You, you're going to write at some point uh, some function that will parse this string yeah. and return a type, some type. Mm -hmm. And because uh, this is how you bring uh, uh, terms from the runtime to the type level, from value to type level. So 
when you, so you, when you sit down to write this function, and then you need to think, what types can my function output? So this other type, uh, is going to output this function type, right? You can have a, a function that outputs a string int or float. Mm -hmm. So when you write this function, you are telling Idris what are the, what are the possibilities that the code needs to, to deal with from now on. So it's when the, the value is, it's, uh, is lifted from runtime to, to, to the type checker because you had at some point to write this function that, 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 uh, that parses the string, you decided at this point the types that can be the outcome of this parsing. Okay, but uh, when escaping that type level, uh, the, these possibilities of types, eventually at runtime I will still have to say, well, if it's not in as I expected, then print an error message or something like this, right? Yeah, if, if you, are, you, you need to write some error type or something, and then in that you, you do an exception or do something yeah. else. Yeah, I haven't seen in this application that you would handle the SQL query. It's kind of you take the, the scheme or schema of the database and a select statement, for example, would then be represented in Idris. You know, it, 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 it's not that you hand over a string and the machine returns or something that's unknown. That's but I mean, that is what SQL databases do, right? They take strings and return you arbitrary byte bit strings, right? And then you need to turn it into your data type, like a, I don't know, Postgres, will not interface with Idris directly, right? It will take strings as inputs, right? Yeah. Which it interprets then, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, let's maybe we should yeah, continue. You could, in theory, write up a, a parser that parses the whole SQL mm -hmm. standard, and then you need to have a type for it, possible yeah. outcome. Yeah, yeah. I think but, but usually you can just parse what, uh, in the domain of your application, in the rest of So, a lot of the interesting data types that are written use in the get syntax because uh, let's see these uh, three types. Uh, right? We have this uh, fin type, which is for finite numbers. So, this, those are the types of uh, numbers that have a uh, bound. So, for instance, for uh, indexing in each one, an array or a vector. You know, uh, you can have. So, um, by the way, this this is also a type that's converted at runtime to to an integer by by it's, it's used a lot of places inside, and, and it's a special type, uh, that this thin type. You have two constructors. You have the fz, so it exists for uh, zero, and the successor the su successor for the next numbers. You, Sorry, you can see that so in, in FZ case, what is K? Sorry? So in, in the first constructor, what is K? Where is K coming from? Yeah, uh, when you see a variable that's in italics, it's a uh, implicit variable. When Idris sees a, a, a variable in a type signature that, has, that is not in a function call position, it was not defined before, going to be an implicit. So it's going to declare for, uh, this variable for you. Uh, and because in the line above uh, there is a net, it's going to know that it should, it must be a net, a natural number. It's just you have to type less, that's, that's it? Yeah, that's because otherwise for some uh, other code which has a, uh, for instance here in fact, you have now uh, already two, the size and the type, and can get much worse with bigger types. So, so to avoid that you write so many variables, the, the, uh, there are those implicit variables. So in the second example with vec, k is nat and a is type, is that is it ordered like this or? Yeah, the k is a net and the a is a type. Uh, so with definite numbers, <coughs> you can see that uh, fz has this type uh, fin, 
SK, what does it mean? It means that it cannot be, um, the bound cannot be zero because SK must be a successor of a natural number. So you know that you are talking about naturals from one uh, towards infinity. <laughs> and for the, net, for the second constructor, you have uh, an argument. The first one doesn't have any arguments. And it means that if you have a finite number of type PK, you can build the next one. And why is this, why is this type useful? Because when I am uh, indexing, I can go off the right. When I am indexing into a vector, I want to be sure that I will not index uh, past the end of the vector, right? So both the vector and the finite number, they are parameterized by the same natural. So I cannot possibly try to index the vector without the end. How do you construct the fin to begin with? Because when you construct it, it needs to relate to the vector it belongs to, right? Yeah, but let's say that I am, I am uh, this function index or a similar function, right? You have fin len and you have vector len. I am using fz here, but because it's a dependent type, this fz does not have a fixed type. fz could be Fin one, fin two, fin three, the type of fz. Fz is a data constructor, but it, uh, its type is variable. Sorry, this is uh, the tricky part about Adrian, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Could one? So, uh, Sorry. Yeah, so fz can have the type of fz is not fixed; it depends. And so how can Idris find out for it needs to compile this function here? How does it find out the type of fz? Because I wrote the same variable here and here, right? When I pass a vector to Idris to index into, it's gonna unify those two values, not types, values. And by unifying those values, it's gonna find out the type of fz here and the type of fz. And we know that I cannot, if the data constructor fs has, because this is a recursive data constructor, right? And if it is bigger than the, the type that it is unified, it's not going to compile. So this is where, this is how it works, why it works. To check my understanding, would another name for fin that's appropriate be um, not less than so it's, it's really it's it characterizes all natural numbers that are less than the natural number that you've given yeah. Yeah. okay why is it called fin i found it a bit uh, unintuitive it's, it's uh it's from the literature of definite types it's uh it's a finite set as it's called finite set. Mm. I mean, <laughs> it's the uh, historical, mm, okay. historical reasons the, the So the next one, um, the next example is the vect type. It's not already a vector, it's a list, but it's a list which uh, carries its size from up. Uh, so it has two data constructors, new and cons. New has a zero size, and cons uh, it has, and new doesn't have any, any meta components, it's just new, just the type. But cons, it has the two parts, the, the head and the tail. And the type, the type of the result is, uh, the size is one bigger than the type of the input. So this is also by unification, right? So this is how you, uh, you, 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 if you keep calling cons, you are going to build bigger and bigger vectors because of unification. Very simple question. Like we talked about the implicits before, but is it syntactically possible to introduce k explicitly? Uh, yeah. where, where would you put it? Will you put it in the data uh, line? Yeah, data type. You can put it uh, before that. You can actually name the, the arguments in the type signature because they can be used 
for the, for the as I did here before, right? Right. Uh, I, gave, I gave a yeah. name to the argument that type signature. Okay. So we can do the same here as well. So, right. I would have expected that it's this just a locally all quantified variable in front of the constructor itself. Is is that exactly the same? Having it sort of at the data fin yeah. level? Or could we could you actually show in the REPL? Yeah. Um, I think it's kind of the same, right? It's just that this is kind of a value, right? So even in Haskell, if you have something that is just fine, it's essentially uh, on <laughs> in core. It's going to be represented as a, as a big kind of lambda that takes a type and, and so on, right? If you have four more functions. Yes, but I would expect the lambda to be local for each. So each constructor is equal to a function which takes yeah. the argument. Right. But what I heard him explain was that actually it's the type constructor which takes the argument. And that, that's what's confusing me, why, why both of them are equal. The functionality in, in Grace is I saying that it's, it's implicit. Right. It will oh, yeah, that's good. That is a good point. I see what you're saying. Yeah, that's an example. Yep, great. Awesome. Coding is the best. So is, now this is A is bound twice, like one on the nil right line and one on the cons line. Are these unified to be the same A? They have to be the same A? Yeah. Um, if I go to use in a, in a const in a, an expression, either new or const, right? You can, uh, you're not going to use both in the same exact expression. So right. what, what you can say they are the same A? Yeah. I'm not sure actually. I think unification only happens once you actually take the argument. So you take a nil and apply it to a cons. That's when actually uh, yeah. this happens. I mean, in Haskell, you also have locally universally quantified type errors in the GED. So if you were to rename the A's there, Two. that wouldn't matter. Sure. Yeah, you, you could rename A to B in the nil line, right? Yeah. You could still mm. type check just like that. I think I would like yeah. Because I, I expected. A to be bound to the type in the first line, the data yeah, line. Yeah, that's also what I misunderstood first. Mm -hmm. I thought you would have to put it there. I see. Yeah, okay. Okay. So uh, this uh, current braces, they are for implicits. You don't need to type them usually like this because the Idris knows about them. But sometimes you need to bring them uh, into scope for some Proofs, and then it's easy for to have this notation and you need to bring that. Uh, I need to prove that uh, I'm when I remove an element from my vector, it's going to be the size going to be uh, when I, uh, one less than before. I need to bring the length into scope so I can use the notation to bring the length into scope. So far, uh, I wanted to show.
show that the last one is just that you can uh, write expression in the type signature again. So if I have this data type parity for even and odd numbers, I can make it clear that the even number is a sum of two equal numbers. Right? So this is just to be more precise about the meaning of the type. And this is useful. I didn't uh, plan to because of the time to talk about this, but it has something called views. When you map a type to another type, you don't express it, so you can, uh, it's easier to write some proofs for those types. Uh, Idris House has this uh, record syntax for records. You give the, the fields, the constructor name, it's just a, a syntax sugar for you need to have those uh, name records like I have in Haskell, or curly braces, and name fields. You have the same interest. One difference is that a record creates a new space for you, so it, I can have another record with the fields color, uh, price, and and if there is an ambiguity, you can use product dot something to resolve this ambiguity. Uh, you can see color, price category, they are defined just like in Haskell. And there is some some um, good here below from other types. Let's say that I have a requirement that my product class A cannot cannot be green. So I have in my record I have the color and the price category. And the category A, they cannot be green for some reason, right? So there's yet another syntax of uh, address. It's in curly braces, which means that when I call this function, I don't need to pass this argument. It's going to be inferred by address. It's an implicit. And it has this auto keyword, which means that address will search at compile time for for this this argument if it's in, in scope. It will search for you. And Single equals sign here is a data type in this. Uh, equals equals is the equal uh, function that returns a bool, but a single equal is a data type, uh, which means that they both must be the same uh, object. <coughs> like so a I'm witness data type or something. Like REFL, Sorry? Like REFL and Haskell. Like yeah, yeah. witness. Is that uh, the construct is also called REFL? So if it is by searching can find this uh, this either with the color either blue or red, which is which means it's not green, then it's gonna combine. Otherwise not gonna combine. Right. So this is an, this is another another fun feature. But it's heterogeneous in quality, mm -hmm. not like in actor. Mm -hmm. So uh, I wanted to to, give, to try to find a somewhat example that was not very small, also not very big. So I came up with this uh, stack language. So this is a TSL for a stack language, and it's encoded as a as a get uh, type in interest, right? You have the type signature, you have the, the, the constructors. Each get constructor here is represents uh, an instruction of this uh, stack language. And it, what, what's the type signature of the stack name type? Uh, first, we have this type. So it's the type of the, of the uh, expression of the, compa of the instruction that's going to give back to you. Right? The second, this, the next types, they are for correctness. They are used as a stack of types. So when you when you create your uh, function use these commands, you need to make sure that when I push something on my stack, I keep need to, to keep track of this type that I pushed. So those vectors they are not vectors of integers or strings. They are actually vectors 
types. Types here they are to be treated as a first class uh, element of the network. So when I push something uh, of type A on my stack, it can be an int, it can be a string, it can be a float, the, the resulting uh, type stack will have this type added to it. When I pop something from uh, my stack, uh, the value of the whole expression will be we have this type, the whole pop expression of this type. I make sure that uh, it's removed. Uh, I make sure that I have it here. It cannot be empty because it is a cons. That so cannot pop from an empty stack. And after the pop, it's gone from the stack. So the step, the, those two, two stacks, they are the after and the, the, the before and the after instruction. And I have just uh, add, remove, they don't change the stack. So I can I use the same uh, stack vector there, V and V. And I have pure and bind. So why do I have pure and bind? Because as I said before, if I have bind, I can use do notation. So what can I do with this uh, DSL here? I can, have, I can write this dot function, dot for duplication. What's the type of the dot function? It does have a value. Uh, it doesn't, uh, we, don't, we don't care about the value of it. And it has the before stack has one, need to have at least one type, cannot be empty, so we have a cons. And the after stack has the same type twice. If if I by mistake push another type of my stack, it's not going to compile. And because I have bind <coughs> in my data type, I can use two notation. So I have this program uh, pop. I can pop because this stack is not empty. And then I push the same value twice. Uh, I have this swap program in this language. Uh, note here that the types of the, uh, the stack before and after the swap, they are really swapped. So if I, if, uh, here I pop X, I pop Y. If by mistake I pushed Y before X, it will not compile. I can actually show this. See if the type error is scary or not. So as I said in the beginning that we have uh, this emphasis on, on whole a type driven whole development plan. When I give the function signature without any implementation, it's a whole. And it is asks me to fill this whole, to write the function. Right? Uh, I need to to give thought to the type signature to express my intent, what I want this function to do. And this already gives Idris a lot of information about uh, how I can write this function. So, uh, when I have uh, a term that starts with this question mark, it's a hole. And Idris creates the type of the hole here. Yeah? If I make this font a little bit smaller. Can you still see it? So I have this hole in the, uh, the upper panel and it just gives, it back, gives me back the type of the hole in the next panel, right? Which has the same type of the function because I have not known anything yet. 
let's keep this hole here. Uh, I want to duplicate something from this stack. So what I do, I get something from this stack to begin with. And now my, my hole is different. Right? The state, <coughs> so the state of the of the before stack is different. I had I, in the attached signature of duck, I have a ty colon s. Now I only, only have s in the hole because I popped something. The state changed, and it just can follow along uh, with you. Uh, let's let's try something. It's not going to compile anymore. Can anybody tell why it's not compiling anymore? It's not compiling because my type signature of duck, I have only one cons. So I can only be sure that there is at, uh, at least one element in this stack. But it just cannot prove that there are more than there is more than one element in this stack. So I cannot pop twice. So, okay, I removed, I'm going to put it back. Uh, am I done now? Can I stop here? Why I cannot stop? Why should I not push? Yes, because the type signature of duck asks for two elements with the same type on the top of the stack. I only put one. So it's very usual when sometimes you you are lost. What do I need to do? You look at the, the type of the hole. It tells you what's the what's the next step, right? So the hole tells me that I have before uh, stack with one element, and after I need to have two elements. So I need to push again. Now it says it's okay. What happens if you would uh, leave now the hole? So <coughs> if you can put uh, some operation that doesn't change the, the stack there, uh, it's going to work. But could you could pop them twice again and push them again. That would yeah. be fine. Let's do the swap one, it's also interesting. So now the whole is the stop function. So again, after I pop something, you can see that the type of the hole is different than the type of the function. That there is one less element at the, in the before step because it's, it was popped. Uh, the step change again. I cannot pop anymore because I don't know if there is a nil or a cons there. Uh, let's try to push in the wrong order, right? Uh, you can see in the in also it gives you the type of the hole but also the types of everything that's in scope. So you see that the type of x is t1, the type of y is t2. And judging by the the type of the function, I need to push x first, right? Because t1 is, is below t2. 
So let's try to push uh, Y first. So the general idea is that if you make your types very expressive, you give more information for the compiler to help you do your stuff. So this is just for uh, the add and, and move functions in the same language. So at this point, there is no list anymore. Right? And after we write duck, swap, move, whatever, then you can keep composing those properties. So it's a, you can build the larger and larger functions. And you know that they, they, are going, they are being checked every step of the way because of the types. So you can be sure that your final program is following the rules. So, so if I wanted to make the add and multiply, uh, add and multiply the top two elements of the snark, you would essentially put the uh, type class constraint on the constructors, and it yeah. again would just work. Uh, another example with a little bit more noise. <laughs> uh, this is the uh, zipper data type. So the data type is where you have. Uh, a sequence of elements and you want to focus on one element of the sequence or you want to move this, uh, this cursor, this focus back and forth in this, in this structure and how can it just help you with that so I have uh, the model of the zipper is two vectors one for the front elements and next for the back elements right? and the the type of the zipper, zipper is parameterized by the size of the front vector and the back vector. So you have the N and N. And of course, the element of the zipper, the type of the zipper. Uh, with two constructors, new and cons, Z, 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 Z cons, for uh, creating an uh, empty zipper and for creating a zipper with. So again, uh, it's this end here is going to unify with this one, and the end here with this one. And you can see already here, uh, we are already taking uh, advantage of the, of the types. I am asserting that M cannot be empty. Right? I cannot have an empty um, back. If I don't have a new, but if I have a cons, I need at least one element. For new, it's okay to have uh, empty vectors, but for cons, it's not okay to have empty vectors. At, uh, at least the back one needs to have one element, which is the cursor. So I can assert this here. So uh, some functions that work with the zipper, cursor, it just, I cannot have uh, Z, uh, Z new here. If I try to call cursor on Z new, it's not going to compile it because I am asserting that I need at least one element. So if I don't have any elements, I don't have a cursor. I don't need to create a sentinel type or element for an empty cursor. There is no need. Uh, if I want to move the cursor one uh, position to the right, I need to have at least two elements 
on the backing vector, right? Because I have the cursor one and the next one, so I can move the cursor past the other one. So I need at least two. Then I can make this assertion here as well. And after the, the movement, after I move the cursor to, to the right, now uh, the front vector has one more element and the back lost one. Because when I move, what I'm doing is I'm removing elements from the back and crossing on the front. Right? So this is how I move my cursor. Uh, the left function is similar. The, uh, what's interesting here are, are the sizes of the vectors. So uh, if I make almost any mistake in the implementation, which is simple but in which, uh, it's not going to compile because the sizes won't match. And wouldn't it be possible to omit the double successors on the right and left functions um, with two x uh, constructors in there? Are those both needed? Sorry, I uh, On the functions right and left, within the type, we have two successors. Yeah. But um, I don't. I think only one is needed because uh, we have in the data constructor we say we already do a successor. No, but this um, they are separate things, right? Yeah. This is uh, here the type signature only the first line one type signature. So here is not about the, uh, Z new or Z cons yet. It's just the type of the whole zipper, which has those two numbers as, um, as parameters. What I need to assert here at this point is that the second number is at least two. That's the amount of amount of elements on the right hand side. Yeah. But Idris does not know that uh, this is needed because it's a vector. Because it's looking only at the type signatures here and there. This, when it's compiling, it's looking at uh, checking the type, it's looking at this line and the first line over there to unify the thing. It's not, it's not uh, yet um, compiling, uh, there is no Z new or Z cons in scope in this first line here. It's just a type signature. Yeah. This, this is why I had to, uh, this is why I chose to put N and N for my type signature over there the first line of the slide, I put N and M because I want it to match on those types here. But there is, there is no, at this point, uh, there is no relation to the vector yet. But it's true, I mean, SM is the successor and it could be, so then it would be at least one. So for example, the uh, signature of the right, you, I also feel like you could leave the way yeah, but yes. I have an M on both sides. Yeah. So you're giving away both the S's, like just it then doesn't you, match. You are, you are asking that the show is too much? Yeah, the, the S in front of the M, I could leave it away on um, both sides. We, I don't see where it would be missing. But we can move to the very right if we have it like this, because we always need at least I think two <coughs> elements on the right. So we yeah. can't mm -hmm. move to the last one. Think about it conceptually, right? You, you, you're essentially saying that back needs to be in an empty, right? So if I move right, mm -hmm. I need to say, well, there must be at least two elements such that if I move right, I still have yeah, one energy, energy. right? Um, I don't think, I'm, that being said, same question, but left. If I go left conceptually, I don't really, um, the pattern matching gives me that back is not empty and I just add to it. So I'm not sure why you need uh, to say that there is a successor to enter. To be honest, I'm not following very well <laughs> what you want to do. But let, let, let me first try to... Okay, yeah. to uh, so, uh, the design of the zipper is that uh, my front my, the, the back elements, they are in the normal order, and the front ones are in the reverse order, right? So they are not, uh, it's like a, a mirror, one from the other. And the, the, uh, my, my constraint, my variant, is that if I have, um, the front can be empty, it's, it's okay, but if I have 
elements, the uh, uh, one element, or they must be on the back. They can only be on the front if the back is already populated. Right? This is like an invariant. Yeah, I think. Um, to your question, I think the reason why the left thing, the left thing is also correct in the tab signature because uh, um, if you have a z-const, then it assumes that you have at least one element. Otherwise, you would have z-nil, and that's why you cannot have. Uh, I think your question was why can can't we have uh, the first type in left be s n and m and a without the successor on m? That's yeah. the question, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. It can't be. It has to be um, the It has to be successor of m. Otherwise. Uh, uh, it could be the m could be zero, mm -hmm. and that would be not uh, that would be not a z cons. It wouldn't adhere to the definition up there. And so I, I think what what could make this uh, thing a bit simpler if instead of z cons we had front and concrete element and then back and then we wouldn't have the successor. I mean, uh, it, it would be uh, semantically the same thing, but that would maybe make it a bit more clear why we need uh, the successor m uh, at some. Yeah. Uh, so. Given this uh, invariant of of not having the back empty, I need two here because if I move to the right and I would have two at least two, it would be zero here afterwards. And I cannot have that. I think maybe people are thinking like, why doesn't this M in SSM unify with this M up there, which means it will be SSSS of some other variable? But you're saying this doesn't matter. The data type definition doesn't matter. It doesn't. No, but yeah. it does matter. It's the pattern match and the set cons which brings in into scope these matches, these requirements for the SMs to match. So it's it's a, in in left is the type signature up there, combined with the set cons pattern oh, match maybe that maybe forces maybe. another S up there into the type signature. I guess I'm it's the one on the back actually, mm -hmm. because back has to be back to the same. Right. Uh, I guess I understand now what's uh, what's uh, the question is. You can actually instead of you could have I could have used n and m in the data uh, data type uh, syntax, right? And mm. maybe I should have used actually here p and q on this on this function because s s m is mm. not going to unify with um, when s s m uh, unifies here if it's the z cons, right? The S M here is going to be equal on S M here. It's not the same M. They don't refer, the variable don't unify by name. Sure. It's uh, uh, it's going to have uh, alpha rename here. It's just a name. So, a question: uh, Can you, so it seems to me from the definition of zip form that you can't have a zip form um, say two zero. Something yeah, like you that. cannot have a two zero. Yeah. So, so the second arm must be at least one. Yeah, be because uh, after I call my function, I cannot have an empty uh, flag. <coughs> this is why I needed to have two elements before the calling right. Yes, exactly. And, and later, you can't have an M because of the definition of people. You said constant. Uh, yeah, you can't construct, construct it with set cons. Yeah, yeah, and this M here, you're not unify exactly with the same, sorry, the same in there, right? Mm -hmm. This, let's say this is a M prime here, and this M, uh, S M prime, we unify with uh, S M. So this S will actually unify with this one, it's correct. So this part here, we unify with this part here. I guess that was the, the question, right? Yeah. So sometimes the is the type signature can get bigger than the actual implementation. <laughs> and, uh, and you cannot let, uh, leave the, the function signature like in Haskell. You need every time to write the function signature. Just two more examples. Um, I can create a zipper from the a list or a vector, and because of the of the type computation, I can use the, the length function there. The type signature is going to compute and compile, and it's going to create a zipper of the right size. Right? 
and from here I just need to copy the, the same end. So I, I, if I write these functions uh, wrongly, it's gonna catch up. Of course I can make another mistakes, but it creates a lot of mistakes already. Should it be access in the second line of wrong list? Or we use commit here to hide? Because um, in case you, you recurse, right, you said it's from this empty list set null, and the next line you pattern match an X and access, but you don't actually use uh, access. <laughs> sorry. This from list here is another function from the vect, uh, vect module. Okay. It's, a, it's a function that creates a vect from a list. Uh, because it just has a function overloading, mm -hmm. and, this is, and mm -hmm. zcons <laughs> takes a, a vector as an argument, mm -hmm. it's going to resolve to other from list. No, it's not the same for list of the this was uh, this was what by accident, but it's funny because it's, it proves a point. <laughs> <laughs> and you do the pattern match just to ensure that it has Ah, you would why do you have to do to name X and XS there? Couldn't you just, you don't, it's just to show uh, yeah it's, uh, uh, there was no need because of I had the empty yeah. argument. Yeah, it's because actually when I write these functions, I use the, the there is a case split in the repo, uh, also in the ID, so it splits all the your cases for you. Right? And what I did, I just added this L at at the beginning, I, but I could have removed the what the repo uh, did for me. So there can't be any overlapping patterns. Like if you just have an L not with explicit cons, that L must have been a cons. You cannot overlap. No, that would be fine. It's really just by accident because you and first have just the case and then added the L to bind. It was just an accident of writing. <laughs> okay, so this is this carry one. <laughs> <laughs> so. What is about, right? Uh, I am um, deleting the, the cursor element from the list here. And uh, just to be clear, I could have written this function almost like it, uh, exactly like in, in Haskell, for instance, without any proofs or, or uh, rewrites or stuff like that. So uh, the, another nice thing of it is that it's, it's opt in, right? You can start. Uh, writing pretty much Haskell libraries and decide to add the great stuff later for the, to the parts that are more critical to your domain, right? So if you are a financial industry, you cannot get some transaction wrong, you can start proving the hell of it. Two pages of proofs, you don't need to prove everything, the whole problem, just what's more critical for you. Well, what would the type signature look like if you didn't try to prove it? Would it change? Uh, the first line? I I don't I don't need this proof here. This is, this is a, a proof. But the rest I will need anyway. I am giving this proof as a as a bonus. Because then the, the code that calls this function can use this proof for that. This is uh, uh, against a Boolean blindness, right? You know, because if you are making decisions based on your rules, you you lose the uh, the, the origin of uh, you may, you have an if you have two branches right? inside that branch the, the, the compiler doesn't know what you just tested before so it's blind to the the decision is only in your head the compiler does not know the decision that you just made because it's only true or false and if you carry proofs along you can use the, those proofs later in the code if you, if you need them. Can you explain again what this function does? I, I actually just, I mean, by intuition, what, what it should do. Yeah, it, it just removes the cursor element because the, the zipper has one element which is uh, in focus, which is the cursor, right? It removes the element under the cursor. Under the cursor, yeah. And returns it? Is, is that a tuple? Does it no, it removes the element and doesn't care about it. So let's explain the type soon. Uh, first, the zipper must be not empty because I want to remove something. Mm -hmm. And what's on the right side is what I uh, showed at the beginning. It's a sigma type, so it's like a tuple. But the 
for the previous elements of the tuple, they influence the type of the following elements of the tuple. Right? So uh, P and Q, they are naturals, natural numbers. And what I'm saying, uh, I'm returning uh, this tuple uh, of two elements, which are the useful return of the function. The first of, of the tuple is a proof. So I have here a text textor of n, right? If I remove one element, I'm gonna have just n plus m elements back, uh, remaining in this input, right? But because of the shuffling of the elements, uh, I'm gonna end up with a zipper of p and q. And but I, uh, to be really correct, I want to prove that the size of the zipper less one is going to be the same before and after. Mm -hmm. Is the type too much to you? Why is, why is the return value not zipper n? Because the left side didn't change, did it? The zipper? Yeah, because here it was a successor of n. Uh, the, not the n. The, the, but why? So we didn't change the left, right? The left part of the zipper. Because the first is the right. But it can, it can change. Yeah, the second, the second case, no? Because you have the environment that the, the, the right thing is masking on empty, right? So if it's the last one and it's in two files in B. If you have list A, B, and you're. Oh, you have to shuffle one over. B, yeah. If I have just one and one? Yeah, you have, have to shuffle list. it over. Yeah. Okay. Maybe you talked about this before, but I didn't quite over. get it. So it's like two percent tax with comma, the same thing as two like two percent just with double star. Yeah. And in this case, you just use it for things like being yeah, more it, right? It's like a tuple, but uh, uh, P and Q in the beginning here they are yeah. not really useful. But I cannot just write uh, I cannot just write this out of the loop, right? Because P, uh, P and Q, they have not been introduced in scope yet. So what are P and Q? Like I need to introduce into the, the scope. Okay. So this is why I need to use this, this sigma type. Yeah, no, I mean, it's clear to me why you have to uh, introduce P and Q, but I was just wondering, why don't you write P star star Q star star the proof star star zipper, blah, blah, blah. Uh, because uh, when I call this function, probably I'm gonna use a pattern matching yeah. on, the, on the left side. I'm going to ignore the first two, yeah. but I want the, the tuple. Yeah. Okay. But this is just a, how can I say, a convention. Convention of how I decided to, to yeah. write this. Okay. Well, why do you have to introduce P and Q? You didn't introduce M and M and A. Why do you need to introduce P and uh, Q? Because on the left side, it's different. The left, on the left side, if I have these variables which have not been introduced, either you create the, you create the best ones for you, but on the right side, it, uh, it cannot because it cannot guess the types you want to output. Mm. So you need to, you need to introduce the, the variables. If, if I'm going through these cases, the I still don't see the case the that um, would violate the case that this maps just to zipper N, M, A. Because uh, in, in the second case, it's still such that the right side It's just. I think. That, hmm. Okay, I'll think a bit more. Maybe <laughs> 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 well, it's the same thing as before. So like, if, if m is zero, you can't have a c for n zero a. So if, if you have the cursor to the right, you have to move it to the left by one position when you need to. 
but otherwise you can move it to the right. Uh, let's go to the case maybe so. Uh, the first one is very simple, I just have one element and from that I create the empty uh, zipper, so it's uh, ZU, uh, yield. And it's so easy that I, cannot, I don't need to write in anything on the right side, it list will infer all the failures and types for me. Because I used ZU, uh, it's gonna unify P to zero, Q to zero, and the rest is gonna be reduced. The second one is, um, it's big, but what's big is the proof. The, as you can see, the, the solution is also very straightforward. I t uh, if the second one is, has just one element, I take the, the, the head of the front and move to the back. Right? So I end up with this. Uh, so for you, the programmer, it's, it's obvious, but I, you, you, when you want to, to, mechan to statically verify that, so I wanted to write the proof, which was more for, for me than for the compiler. Uh, this proof is, is um, using a feature of Idris, this is a keyword uh, we write. So what happens here is that I have these two types, right? Uh, the successor plus then zero and I want to prove it's equal to plus len 1 which is obvious if I have plus something 0 it's going to be something plus 1 which is the, the, the right side so this is to show uh, one of the annoying parts of Idris because it's obvious for you, for me But the compiler has no implicit knowledge. Uh, the, the plus is a function, right? It's not uh, it's a function that's written in the by a human. So it, this function models arithmetic, but it's something that cannot be automatically given to the compiler like a knowledge, like you are teaching someone. So you need to prove it to him, to the to it, to the compiler, that those two types are the same. And Idris has uh, some helpers uh, for that, like this plus mutative and plus zero right mutual. They are um, data types. This one here is about uh, mutativity, so le uh, plus len one is equal one len as the other way around. And the second one is uh, that zero to the right is neutral, it doesn't change the value. And when I apply these two rewrites, the type becomes uh, so simple that I can use just a uh, REFL. REFL is just a data constructor with x equals x, the same thing on both sides. And after those two rewrites, it becomes the same. So I can just use a uh, REFL. So, so Cock has uh, some tactics that essentially take care of a lot of those kind of simple things. Does um, Idris have something similar? Yeah, um, as I said, I only started learning Idris uh, last year, and from what I, I, I gather, they used to have these uh, text proofs as well, but they moved on from that. What they use as a uh, elaborator, it's a um, it's, uh, meta language when you can write your proofs, and then it creates Idris code from that. So it's like a, it's a, it's not pure Idris, it's uh, another level, like a meta level of Idris. But I don't have experience with the elaborator. But these proofs here, they don't use elaborator. They are, uh, this is normal Idris code, there is no meta language here. Uh, it's just that this rewrite is really, um, is really, uh, <coughs> I want just to show it, to give uh, like a, a taste of it, but it's, um, its goal is to rewrite <coughs> just a type of expression. It doesn't, at runtime, it doesn't do anything. Right? It's just for type, type checker to be happy. 
So what this one, what this first one he is going to join is I can give him len and one. So it's going to give me the back the type one len. It's going to uh, contribute the the values for me. And this one here is going to say that uh, plus zero right neutral is going to say that len with a zero on the right is the same as len. So after those two rewrites, it's going to be x equal x, and then it's the proof is done. But I don't understand how that would apply. Because if you have plus commutative len, okay, that means that you have s, then uh, plus zero then. That means the zero is on the left side. But does the plus zero right neutral? Uh, um, so that, that is the rule which says if you have got a zero on the left side of the plus, then it Goes, uh, goes that's by yeah. definition of uh, plus that's equal to yeah, the second ah, one. That's <coughs> oh, yeah, okay, okay. And it's the that's second one, one will actually uh, happen first because it's inside the, the outer room. So first, uh, it's going to eliminate this this one here. It's going to be S len. After this rewrite, it's going to be S len. And after this rewrite here, it's going to be uh, one len. Plus one then, right? So okay, plus one is equal is the same as the su successor. So one plus len is equal to s len. So both sides will be the same. You know, recursion in plus is on yeah. the left. So yeah. Okay. That, um, yeah. So both sides. Good point. This is actually we. Why we need this? We just need this because how plus was written. Plus, when they do the case analysis on, on the, the plus function, the case analysis is done, is done on the on the uh, left side first. If if plus was written the other way around by someone who wrote plus at the first place, those two rewrites would not be needed. So this is the annoying part of this. You know, you, you need to know how plus was written, so you know you need to recurse on uh, the the plus a b. The, the case will split on A, and then you need to know that to change the order of the things. So it's not, it's not a, how can I say, totally magical, super. <laughs> Sometimes you need to get your, your hands a little bit dirty to make those proofs compile. So, so someone provides the plus function, and, and other functions will basically provide a library of proofs that can be used with their. Functions. Yeah, uh, those here they are uh, part of a library of proofs. I can show the definition very quickly. Short time check. Uh, we had almost one half hour. Okay. Uh, so let me just show really quick. So this is plus, right? <coughs> and everybody see it <coughs> down here. Oh, I can actually. So you can see that plus is, is the, the pattern is matching the first mm -hmm. element. That one. Um, so it's just a function. You can see that what it does, it just switches the, the things on the, the plus. Is plus community an assertion? Did someone asserts this is true? Sorry? Is it like the plus community is an, like an axiom? It's like someone who's no. wrote an assert it, this is true? It's actually a function. It's a function that returns a value of this uh, of type equal. But what it does is that on the left side, it returns a type equal, where the left side is left plus right, on the other side is right plus left. Because because equal this equal here uh, remember that I said it's very useful to have this uh, coloring by the compiler because it can it can confusing. You see that the equal there is in blue, right? So it's a type. Equal is a type. So when I have a equal b, it's actually uh, 
like equal to what is on the left side, equal to AB. It's like a, a type constructor. And RECOM is the data constructor of that. <coughs> So if I read the delete proof, essentially its type is the theorem that it says, says for any vector of length len and with the elements a, it holds that <coughs> s of blah 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 equals this. If I read it this way, why do we actually need that assumption of vector len a? Why can't we just prove the right statement for any len <coughs> and instantiate that proof? Uh, so it was a, a way of introducing len uh, because. I, I pass the vector here to delete proof. <coughs> just be, be, because it, um, okay. it, 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 no, it's because it needs to, to unify this um, the len here, right, of this x s. It needs to be unified with the result of this proof because I want to prove something about this. But wouldn't you get that essentially from the type signature above, anyways? So if you just uh, if you just put that, so you would write the delete proof just for implicit len. It holds that if you use plus in this way. And that's it would, equality. Would be implicit. You would need to find, I guess. The and and it would be up to Idris to find out how to you how what len you need. Yeah, uh, I could actually write like a general uh, proof for this, like uh, like those two which are general, and use a general proof right there. I could use a uh, rewrite on there, don't need this where in those colors, etc. Could be done. Because this is, uh, this is uh, uh, in any case, that's true. Um, I, think, I think the question is imagine, if, I mean, uh, but if we only take the generic part, that means we prove the uh, plus and s statement for some uh, number l. Is not related to them, and because in that case we have got on the on left side we have got n and s of zero, and on that on the that means m is zero. That means it will try to prove n plus zero equals uh, p plus q, and and that's why I think uh, uh, I, I think that's what they are talking about. Because uh, even if you take uh, the other part of if you only take the second part of the proof, it should still work because it can pattern pattern match and then see that. I think it should be able to do it, I don't know, and that's the question that, uh, uh, but, uh, but I still need some, some way of, of uh, unifying those things, because in Idris, um, when I use where, implicits don't, are not uh, inherited in this scope, right? So, the, this, but it doesn't matter. What I'm trying to say is that uh, I need some way to, uh, to tell Idris that when I'm using this proof, I'm talking about uh, the length of this thing, right? I need to somehow bind those, those two ideas. This proof is about that, that length of that vector. This, is one, uh, this, is, this was one easy way to do it, uh, but I could, as I said, I could write it uh, like a general proof of this, and then I could use uh, some rewrite directly on the proof of that. But I need to bind those two things together somehow. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I, I know I knew this would happen. <laughs> I had more stuff to talk about. Mm -hmm. But I, I knew that it's it's a big subject. There is there are views in Idris and um, uh, the, the suitable prop, uh, propositions. Uh, so if anybody got interested by <laughs> the ideas here and want to ask something, uh, I can be reached by reading this or I can talk to you. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Be able to submit a pull request against. I think there's a third friends of Haskell um, organization in GitHub. Should be linked from the homepage. Otherwise, ping us an email thread. Okay.
so then everybody has access to it.